Hello everyone, welcome to Straight Talk, I'm Sharon. We received this sad news that acclaimed British pianist Fu Chong died of coronavirus at the age of 86 in London this week. Mr. Fu is one of the first Chinese-born soloists to achieve international stardom. He had won numerous international awards. He was particularly revered for his interpretation of Chopin. Since the news of his death broke out on China's social media, in less than 24 hours, the message of his passing was viewed 480 million times, with tens of thousands of comments posted. Musicians around the world, including Lan Lan, have expressed their condolences. Fu Tong was mourned by many Chinese, also because his father, Fu Lei, is a household name in China, whose tragic death was remembered by all till this day. The senior Fu was a distinguished French interpreter, an avid art and music lover, and a passionate educator. He translated a good number of well-known classic French novels into Chinese, including the work of Honoré de Balzac, uh, Romain Roland and uh, Voltaire. He was a respected educator who wrote the famous home letters by Fu Lei to his eldest son, Fu Tong, when he was studying in Warsaw on scholarship. He wrote nearly 200 of those letters, teaching Fu Tong important morals and values. In 1958, during the height of China's anti-rightist campaign, Fu Lei was branded as a rightist by the Shanghai Communist Party Committee. There was no clear or consistent definition of a rightist. In general, any person with intellectual background who has shown slight capitalist traits might get labeled as a rightist and be subject to awful, awful treatment. The anti-rightist campaign was a prelude to the Cultural Revolution that happened a few years later. And things went even more extreme during the Cultural Revolution. For example, an elegant haircut could get you into trouble. I'm not joking, it, it was really that outrageous and inconceivable to people today. Well, if you think about all the political correctness that is going on now, we may not be that far from those days as we think we are. It was believed that the senior Fu was marked as a rightist because he said some comments that were relatively neutral about the United States. Uh, when his parents were officially and politically labeled, Fu Tong was finishing a music course in Poland. He was asked to return to China immediately. The boy had already taken some time off to return to China previously to participate in the anti-rightist movement. He was only allowed to go back to Poland to resume his study after he declared in writing that he would part with any rightist thoughts. But this time, Fu Tong did the unthinkable. As soon as he finished his course, he fled to London instead of returning um, to his parents in Shanghai as instructed by the Chinese officials. He was considered to have betrayed his country and engaged in treason um, with his act. He got his parents into deeper trouble. And none of the parents or the boy knew at the time that they would never see each other again. Fu Tong was only 21 years old that time. Seven years later, in 1965, Fu Tong was granted British citizenship. That was the same year when the horrific Cultural Revolution began, thousands of miles away in China. It was truly an unprecedented calamity. The CCP imprisoned millions due to their association with a targeted family member. In a few months' time, at the end of August 1966, his parents' home was raided by Red Guards. Now, Red Guards were something like um, quite similar to the Hitler youth, if not worse. Um, the horrific Red Guards shouted slogans, took away all the valuables, beat up the parents, forced them to kneel for hours, and publicly humiliated them for four days. The Red Guards finally found a crucial piece of evidence that would prove that the Fu family was an enemy plotting against the party. What did they find? A small vintage mirror. Yes, you heard me right. A handheld mirror from many years ago. The mirror was wrapped 
uh, in a page torn from a magazine. The page had a picture of Song Mei Ling, the wife of Chiang Kai-shek, the leader of the Chinese Nationalist Party. The Nationalist Party was defeated by the Communist Party in 1949 and retreated to Taiwan. On the back of the mirror was a picture of Chiang Kai-shek himself. The mirror actually belonged to his sister-in-law, but not even to the Fu family. In the wee hours of 3rd of September 1966, Fu's parents just couldn't take it anymore. They couldn't take the humiliation, couldn't take the abuse, uh, so they took their own lives by hanging themselves. Uh, what makes this tragedy even more tragic, in my mind, is even until the moment they died, they still professed their loyalty to Mao Zedong and the Communist Party. In the note they left behind, they called the party wise and Mao Zedong great. But some people blamed Fu Tong for abandoning his parents, who loved him so dearly. Fu Tong later explained his decision to his friends. I had no choice. After I went back to Poland to resume study, the criticism targeted on my father increased. I heard many negative remarks about him even in Poland. Had I returned in December 1958 when I graduated, they would have asked me and my parents to expose and attack each other, something we would never agree to do. It was a tough decision for me. Of course, I will forever live with this guilt of leaving my parents behind. Fu Tong made a heart-wrenching choice. But if you look at what happened to his younger brother, Fu Ming, you will know that he made the right choice. Because of the horrific abuse by the Red Guards, his younger brother attempted suicide three times. Just imagine the agony he was in. He tried drowning himself, hitting his head against a brick wall, and electrocuting himself. But for miraculous reasons, all attempts failed. The truth is, Fu's family wasn't the only one that suffered. Out of the 550,000 people who were branded rightists in the 50s, only about 100,000 of them survived into the 1970s. Just to bring a closure to this story, the rightist labels fixed on Fu Chong's parents were finally removed in 1979, 13 years after the tragic death. The Chinese government said the couple's record would be wiped clean and their reputation stored. This is how the regime deceives innocent Chinese people, by denouncing previous acts as mistakes or oversights and revising the records for some individuals. They never take legal responsibilities proportionate to the crimes they have committed. Had any other political party on the faith of this earth made just one of the mistakes the CCP had made, it would have been booted off the political stage. The CCP, however, have always managed to stick around all these years. Fu did not return to China until 1979, when the Cultural Revolution ended and when the rightist labels on his parents were removed. The letters written by his late father to him were compiled into a book and published in 1981. Now, Fu Lei wrote many letters to his younger son as well, not just to Fu Chong, but during the Cultural Revolution, his younger son uh, had to burn all these letters uh, just to keep himself safe. Years later, Fu Chong wanted to share the beauty of music with the Chinese people by performing some concerts in some of the cities. But Beijing wanted him to do one thing. They laid out a condition. Uh, he had to repent over his decision to flee to London, something that happened more than 30 years ago, and after all that happened to his parents and a brother. Unbelievable, I know. A music professor twisted uh, words of Fu Chong a little bit to make them look like an apology from Fu Chong, so the concert could still take place. Now, Fu Chong was famous in China, but his career never really took off there. This is it for today. I hope you have enjoyed the video, and if you have, please do subscribe and turn on your notification for future episodes. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.